We're coming up on fall now, and that's the best time to start vermicomposting. I'll tell you why on this short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. About the middle of February each year, my email inbox mail. just lights up. People are interested in gardening, and because they're interested in gardening, their interest in vermicomposting lights up too. Problem is that spring is the absolute worst time to start vermicomposting. Now let me take that back. It's always a good time to start vermicomposting. But if I had to pick a time of year to get started, it's probably the last one I'd pick for several reasons. One, I'd say it takes about four to six months to generate worm castings that would make a dent in your garden needs. You'll be way beyond the season by the time you've got worm castings. Of course, you could always just apply in the fall, but let's be honest, most people want to do this in the spring. Two, the desire to get worm castings now leads to some seriously impatient vermicomposting. The biggest mistakes in vermicomposting, and the reason most people quit doing it, is they try to solve the world's food waste and soil health problems right now. They do it wrong, they get frustrated, and they quit. This leads to overfeeding, which is the root cause of 90% of worm problems like fruit flies and bad odors. Now real quick guys, if you're enjoying this video and want me to make more of them, please like this video, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. Now back to why you want to start in the fall. Fall is the best time to start vermicomposting for a few reasons, especially if your worm bin is subjected to the outside air temperatures. One, it gives you that time to establish a worm bin and start making that precious black gold. And by the time spring rolls around, you should be at the point of harvesting and using those worm castings. Two, the heat of summer is behind you and you can more easily establish a worm bin when you don't need to worry about the miserable heat of summer or the microbes slowing cold in winter. By the time winter rolls around, you'll have an established microbe rich environment with lots of volume that's gonna be resistant to temperature swings and keep your warm bin going when the temperature really starts to drop in winter. Three, fall gives us a bounty of waste materials that worms love, specifically honeydew and cantaloupe at the end of the summer and discarded pumpkins at the beginning of November. Now add some of that to shredded leaves from your yard along with the decayed leaves from the previous fall and you'll have a thriving bin and happy worms in no time. Just add a metric buttload of absorbent carbon materials to soak up moisture because all those melons I mentioned are like 90% water. Gang, I've got an almost book-length resource for you to download right now. It's the PDF version of our ultimate guide to vermicomposting where we cover anything from the basics of vermicomposting, how to start and maintain a worm bin, the financial opportunities in vermicomposting, and more. Just click this little link above my left shoulder and you can sign up to get that 60 plus page guide immediately. Gang, there's never a bad time to start vermicomposting, but the worst time to start is when you actually need the worm castings the most. All right, that's it. We're gonna see you on the next video.